Hello again everyone, Edwin Learn back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about Taurus archetypes and I'm going to use uh, examples for the Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. So anyway, well, I think um, perhaps uh, NFL uh, coach or perhaps former NFL coach, I don't know if he's going to ever coach again, Jeff Fisher, uh, typical uh, Taurus personality, um, prototypical Taurus personality. He has a Taurus moon. And uh, many of you uh, football fans may have known uh, he did endure a number of mediocre seasons with the Tennessee Titans before they went 13-3 and and went to the Super Bowl in the 99-2000 uh, season, I believe that was. And he really showed a lot of uh, perseverance and a lot of uh, patience. He also stated before that season uh, they went to the Super Bowl, he said that they would be playing in January, and by doing so, he was basically intimating they would make the postseason, and sure enough, they do. They did, and Taurus people often come through on what they say they're going uh, to do. They're generally not going to make promises they can't keep. Now, uh, the thing about it is uh, there was another season with Jeff Fisher, uh, 2002 uh, NFL season, when the Tennessee Titans started one and four, and um, at that time, uh, it looked they were floundering. They were not playing well. Obviously, they looked like they were they were basically left for dead, uh, figuratively speaking, in that in their division in, in the league or what have you. They looked like one of the worst teams in the NFL, and I'm sure he felt Jeff Fisher felt they could turn uh, things around, and sure enough, they did, and wound up finishing eleven and five. Ultimately, lost. Uh, in the AFC title game uh, to the uh, eventual AFC champion, uh, Oakland Raiders. Now, uh, that, I think that he's a very good example of someone that embodies Taurus characteristics. Now, another, uh, what I see as a very prototypical Taurus personality is uh, Taurus rising NFL quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Now, a couple seasons ago, he made, I guess you could uh, consider it a semi-proclamation uh, that his team would win the last six games of the regular uh, season, and though many thought that may have been preposterous, uh, sure enough, they did. Maybe his prophetic Sagittarius son had a little to do with it. But he had um, also, though, I mean, Taurus uh, people generally, as I stay before, they often will come through on what they say they're going uh, to do. And... Uh, also, I mean, Taurus people can be nearly very composed and nearly unflappable in clutch situations, and Aaron Rodgers uh, is simply uh, no exception. I remember in that playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys a couple seasons ago, he made an outstanding throw to a receiver. The receiver barely was in bounds. I still know how he got the pass, how he managed to complete the pass, but he did. And uh, it was a miraculous throw with very uh, in catch and really with very little time left on the clock. And anyway, it, it put the uh, Green Bay Packers in a position to win uh, the football game. A field goal was kicked shortly thereafter and it went through and they won. Uh, they, they either... I don't remember if that went into overtime or the or the field goal won the game, but I know that put them in a position which at least to, to, some, on some, to some degree enabled them to win uh, that football game. But anyway, also uh, it's funny that uh, Joe Buck is a is a, an announce, sports announcer, and ironically he has a Taurus son, and he was stating something about Aaron Rodgers in a game having great perseverance. And there, uh, and Joe Buck, depending on time of birth, likely you can have his son at, at uh, five degrees Taurus. Aaron Rodgers, oddly enough, has a five degree Taurus ascendant. Anyway, um, so I'm sure Joe Buck would know something about perseverance. But anyway, um, another uh, person that comes to mind that's very emblematic of the zodiac sign Taurus is uh, mixed martial artist boxer Conor McGregor, who has a Taurus ascendant. Now, uh, many of you may remember boxing fans. I uh, remember the fight he had against Floyd uh, Mayweather. Now, McGregor showed uh, much uh, determination, tenacity, and endurance, and it really apparently fighting, uh, well, or at least I should say, an apparent um, superior fight, a much superior fighter in Floyd Mayweather. And the fight went much longer than many people had projected or anticipated. And a lot of it had to do 
I think with his uh, with uh, Conor McGregor's very strong Taurus rising will uh, willpower and the thing about this too uh, going back now to Floyd Mayweather who has a Taurus moon I mean, Tor, uh, Floyd Mayweather, as many of you may know, often likes to flaunt the money that he has. Perhaps that is that emotional Taurus moon need uh, to do so. And money probably makes him a lot more secure than even the average person, uh, I would say, with that Taurus moon. Now, anyway, another person that strongly embodies Taurian energy is um, the editor-in-chief uh, of uh, Forbes magazine, uh, publishing executive Steve Forbes, who has a Taurus ascendant. Now, I mean, obviously, I mean, he's so affluent, I'm sure he can make money work for itself, uh, so to speak. Taurus, as many of you may know, is the money sign, and they can, Taurus can have a prodigious financial acumen. Uh, according to um, Wikipedia, the net worth for Forbes is $430 million. Uh, dollars and that's I mean I would say that's pretty astounding and a lot of that is attributed I think to his Taurus ascendant and another uh, person that's a good example and a really strong shows uh, strong Taurus energy I think is um, the legendary uh, entertainer musician uh, James Brown who had his son in Taurus and he has uh, one that uh, he has been referred to as the hardest working man in show business. Uh, no shocker there because Taurus is known to be, uh, can be very laborious uh, workers. There's some that might be somewhat more apathetic and lackadaisical, but the really, the Taurus who really shows the really good attributes are, is usually one that could be very industrious and hardworking. Now, uh, James Brown has a Leo ascendant, so a lot of that that uh, you could say that basic want perhaps for that musician to, to, to maybe to do something uh, music related uh, comes out perhaps in more flamboyant, uh, charismatic, Leo-like manner, given that he has a Leo ascendant. Now, anyway, and on a more personal note, I had a an enemy in um in school from the great from the junior high into a uh, high school who was he was a perpetual uh, enemy of mine i got into a fight with him one time in uh in the lunchroom and i won the fight but he um held a grudge against me for that that whole period from junior high into uh high throughout high school throughout the completion of 12th grade and he has uh he had a taurus sun and likely scorpio moon and uh, Taurus people, I mean, are known to be very easygoing and generally very passive and docile. But once, I mean, if they're irritated or aroused, they can hold grudges for protracted periods. And the fact he likely had a Scorpio moon could have added a little uh, vindictive quality to his nature anyway, and vengeful quality to his nature. The thing about Taurus people that you one must remember, despite you know them being often very calm, placid, and easygoing, uh, if you really push them to the points of endurance, they could be uh, very implacable uh, adversaries to say the least. They may not get angry quickly, but they can hold grudges for long. Now, anyway, and I think that point I'm making is that person on a personal note really showed some very strong uh, Taurian qualities who stubbornly held a grudge against me for many years because of that fight. And I would not be surprised if he still uh, and he still was lamenting over that. I would put even money on it uh, that, that he is actually to this day. But anyway, now another thing about Taurus, I mean, Taurus people can often, I believe, make very good uh, talk show hosts. Uh, remember that Taurus is connected with the vocal cords and they often have unsurpassed uh, patience. Now, David Letterman who uh, has a Taurus uh, ascendant, uh, Jay Leno, a Taurus son, and Craig Ferguson, Stephen Colbert, are also have Taurus sons. Now, one time uh, on well, that late that show with uh, David Letterman, he David Letterman had asked uh, NBA superstar LeBron James, he asked him, well, how old are you? You know, in his deep uh, Taurus rising voice. And LeBron James being flippant and, you know, sarcastic, he responded with uh, the answer 17. Now, uh, 
the thing about it is I understand LeBron was really joking. He was messing with David Letterman, but still, uh, David Letterman was very, you know, calm and composed, and he and he really didn't really have much of an answer, I don't think, for that. He just had a very calm, placid, Taurus rising look. And the point I'm making is that Taurus, uh, Taurus people can have very, they have this very strong patience, and I think uh, David Letterman is someone that certainly is very atypical of, uh, of um, Taurus rising. So anyway, and really Taurus also, Taurus people can often be very mellifluous, have mellifluous resonant voices, as I stated before, the uh, connection with the vocal cords. And they also can be surprisingly articulate and analytical, which of course can be an asset for being a good uh, talk show host and the fact, again, that they can epitomize patience. Now, and they also have the ability to roll with verbal punches. Uh, but the thing, another thing about Taurus is that they, of course, they could have that legendary stubbornness and obstinacy. Now, many of you uh, football fans out there may have heard of former NFL player uh, James Harrison, who has his son in Taurus. Now, he stated one time that he was not going to change uh, the way he played. And uh, he was very adamant about this in spite of the NFL perhaps enforcing like penalties that would make him harder to, uh, to play the way he is accustomed to playing without committing penalties. But he was really was like, you know what, I don't really care. I'm still going to play the way I want to play anyway. He was not worried about repercussions in terms of possible penalties, I guess, from, from the way he played. Uh, and the thing about this, what, what really is emblematic of, I mean, he is really a true uh, Taurus personality because, I mean, you talk about Taurus people often, uh, of all the zodiac signs, probably have the most difficulty in deviating from what they generally want to do. And they often have the one, they're the ones that have the most difficulty in making uh, transition or change. Keep in mind, I have Taurus rising and I've lived in a, a community. I mean, I've been living in the city for like, you know, 24 years and a lot of people, you know, would have probably left by then. I, I want to go, but it's, it just seems like what happens is when Taurus gets set in a certain position, a certain mode, a certain way of being, they have such a difficult time for, uh, for, you know, given they are, I think, the most fixed sign of the zodiac being fixed and earth, they just don't, they have a hard time wavering from what they're accustomed to doing. Now, anyway, uh, this is going out, talk about, uh, I mean, another person that strongly uh, epitomizes Taurus energy was the late uh, MLB Major League Baseball player, Tony Gwynn. I mean, he's obviously, he played uh, 20 seasons, all for the same team, the San Diego Padres, is certainly a model of consistency, durability, and stability. And I mean, he showed a lot of loyalty and steadfastness to his team by staying with them for all for his entire uh, MLB career. And he also showed some very uh, analytical uh, Taurus ability, I believe. And at uh, one time he had uh, described um, Barry Bonds uh, swing when others may have been reluctant to do so. He decided to do it. I think a lot of this was connected with the fact Barry Bonds wasn't going to necessarily do that for someone. So to tell the public how he, how he uh, swung his bat. But he but what happened was Tony Gwynn was able to analyze it and, and really I felt did a very good job in doing so. Uh, it was like in a Baseball Digest magazine, the now defunct magazine, Baseball Digest, best of my knowledge, does not exist anymore. Now, anyway, now uh, the thing about it is, too, on another uh, personal note, I mean, I think someone that embodies uh, very strong Taurus characteristics would be myself having Taurus rising. Uh, given that I've, I mean, I think, you know, I don't say a lot of positive things about myself, uh, but I will say, I think in, in certain ways, you know, in, in instances in my life, I think I've shown certain perseverance dealing with certain trials and tribulations. I have a number of uh, uh, restrictions and limitations, having irrevocable damage, uh, nerve damage to my arms and I don't, I'm not able to drive. Um, and so there are certain things and, you know, limited income. I'm just in a situation where, I mean, I've had to really show perseverance and be able to really stay very composed uh, during, uh, you know, a very negative period. And uh, so really 
that I, I think I really show a lot of strong Taurus energy. And the thing, um, and another uh, person I want to, uh, and also I mean just the fact that I've had to deal with the vicissitudes of life and trials and tribulations very calmly and composed, at least for the most part. Now, uh, last but not least, I want to talk about someone else I think really uh, exemplified a Taurus energy is NBA legend uh, Wilt Chamberlain, who had a Taurus ascendant. Now, many of you uh, basketball fans out there may have heard, whether you whether you were around when it happened or you've read about it, that he had that uh, really that um, very famous 100-point uh, effort against the New York Knicks, which of course is unprecedented as far as uh, points in an NBA game goes. And uh, the thing about it is he's, I mean, this really, I think, showed a lot of endurance in that ability to do that. And I don't know if he played the entire game, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did or at least played very close to that entire game in order to put up 100 points and amass that number. Now, he also, um, it took him, he also showed a lot of patience and perseverance because uh, he played about eight seasons, or at least in the eighth season, uh, won finally won an NBA title. And in nine, like nine seasons in the NBA, he led the, 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 the league in uh, minutes uh, played uh, per game, the average, the average minutes per game. So it showed that, I mean, he was somebody that, uh, that actually, I mean, at least that, you know, him... With I think a lot of that was that Taurus energy because Taurus is the sign associated with endurance and the fact he was able to log in so many minutes and just do it so uh, consistently it showed I mean Taurus energy is often latent energy and it's often I mean Taurus can be very uh, methodical and they are often able to uh, you know conserve their energy for when uh, they need it uh, the most so anyway people that'll conclude uh this youtube uh, astrological segment for taurus archetypes and stay tuned next time where i'll be talking about gemini archetypes two things i want to get with you on before i head out firstly the stars may impel but do not compel and secondly never isolate any single astrological element aspect planetary placement position configuration influence or what have you and make an analysis of a person astrologically speaking based on this alone because astrologically speaking the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one until next time people stay well